So next up is the two population proportion. So in a market research study conducted by Marilyn Merlot Winery on red wine preference, following results were uh, found, I was gonna say recorded, but I guess it means the same thing. Of a sample of 500 men, 210 preferred red wine, and a sample of 500 women, 150 preferred red wine. Perform a hypothesis test to determine if the proportion of men preferring red wine is 25% higher than for women. All right. So the hint here is we'll need a secondary test or a confidence interval. All right. So let's one thing at a time. So let's just focus on the higher part. All right. So there's a little added twist to this prop, but it's it's nothing that we can't handle. The hint really kind of clarifies everything, but. We're looking at the question, the main question, being whether or not the population proportion of men preferring red wine is higher than that of women. All right, so. All right, I guess I'll throw in a question mark there. So the type of test here, because we have two separate populations. All right, we don't know that they're necessarily distributed the same way, but they are specifically two separate populations, and we're concerned with a proportion. Make them little bullet points there. All right, so that's going to be a two-prop Z test. So the assumptions, conditions. All right, so we can still reflect back to the first page. But it's essentially everything that we had for a one prop Z test, along with the fact that there are two populations, All right? But no harm in looking. We're looking at the binomial probability situations. But again, there's that weird instance where we have to verify that NP is greater than or equal to five and NQ is greater than or equal to five. Um, and you know, that that's the thing that tends to throw people for a loop. And just remember that if we're looking at a binomial distribution, since a binomial distribution is a special case of a normal distribution, we have satisfied the idea of a normal distribution. All right. And just to address something that I, I don't think I mentioned before, you know, in some of the cases, you know, when, when you're talking about a one sample Z test, uh, just off the top of my head, but also a T test and things like that, there, there often is a condition where we have to establish that N is greater than 30. So, you might wonder why that's not required here again because it's a it's a, a question of whether it, uh, or not the distribution could be considered normal and since it's the binomial distribution that we're really dealing with and again that's a special case of a normal distribution we've we've got that covered but also the np and nq if n is not sufficiently large then the product of NNP won't be greater than that that five, that benchmark of five. All right, so we, we're getting it on both uh, from both directions. So we uh, we're, we're going to get what we need. It's just we have to make sure we address these things. All right, so my conditions. Well, binomial. Let's let's talk about that for a second. Fixed number of trials. All right, yeah, that sounds right. We got 500 men, 500 women. Fixed probability. Um, eh. What is the probability that a person is going to select uh, red wine or prefer red wine 
Uh, can we say 50-50? Not necessarily, because we're looking to show that the proportion of men who prefer red wine is 25% higher than for women. So it, it would imply that there would not be equal quantities. Right? So whatever value that we're going to go with for our P, we're going to have to make the assumption of whatever that value is. Right? So that's going to take our four conditions. You know, If one of the conditions for uh, binomial distribution is an assumption, then, then they all basically have to be thrown into the assumption category, right? So four conditions for a binomial distribution. And again, because we, we don't know a particular P and therefore a particular Q, I mean, we, we can get P hats from this, but not necessarily population proportions. We'd have to make the assumption that NP is greater than or equal to five and N times one minus P is greater than or equal to, I almost wrote P again, uh, five. All right. Um, Yeah, I mean, that that pretty much covers it. I feel like I'm missing one. Two independent, yeah. I mean, that's that's what caused us to select this test to begin with. Yeah, got it. And it's just it it feels weird to have an entire category not accounted for, but that's just because we have to make a lot of assumptions here, All right? So. For our null hypothesis, we're just going to state that P1 and P2 are the same. The alternative, now the, the men, we're going to go with uh, population 1. So we're going to go with the alternative that if they're not equal, that the population proportion of men is more than the population proportion of women. All right, so... That's going to give us a right tail test. All right, critical value, critical value. Let's see, uh, they didn't give us an alpha, so we're going to go with the 0.05. All right, so second vars. Um, we're looking for inverse norm. I just do the 0 0.05 and negate it. So 1.645. Should know that by heart by now, but I, I just, I'm not confident enough. My test statistic, Z, P hat one minus P hat two. Minus P1, minus P2, all over the square root of, now this is the big question, all right, so can we go with the P bar? Uh, are we working with a pooled population? Uh, only if we can assume that the two populations are distributed the same way. Now, it's humans, males and females, um, but really, I mean, it, it, you're in a lot of gray area here because it's not just the fact that they're humans. The distribution of preference related to the fact that they're males and females. Do I know enough to say that the the taste in red wine would be distributed the same way among males and females. Uh, I, I don't, that's that's kind of why we're here, right? So I'm gonna go with the P hat. I'm writing Q hat just cause it saves space. Uh, P hat, Q hat, with a little subscripts of one over n1. So I go back and forth with the q and 1 minus p just because it's uh, 
you know, dependent on the amount of space I have available. P hat two, Q hat two, and two. All right. So in terms of the computation, it's not it's not terrible. It's not it's never gonna be terrible because the calculator is doing it for you. But you know we still gotta mine the information out of here. We have again from the men two hundred and ten out of five hundred. So that's point four two. And we had a hundred and twenty out of five hundred. Should be half of that. Uh, not half. Oh, roughly half of that. 0.24. All right. So I'm actually going to write these values kind of in there. Just sort of shorthand. So 0.42 minus 0.24. If we assume equality in the null hypothesis, then P1 minus P2 is going to zero. Uh, here, I'm just going to write a rough estimate of what my denominator would be. All right, so, just to just kind of show some work. All right, so alpha, alpha y equals for you, but alpha n over d for me. <clears throat> Point four two times one minus point four two over n1 is 500 plus alpha n over d 0.24 and so we get that I mean as, as decimal values go that's not terrible let me convert that over uh, all right I guess I'll write I'll write it now, you know what, I'm gonna write the decimal. All right, so we're looking at, and let me just take this and store it as some dummy variable so I can work with it. So 0 0.42 minus 0 0.24 divided by the square root of that dummy variable Oof, 6.167. All right, so either I screwed something up or it's just a really big uh, test statistic. Okay, it's a stat test, one, uh, two propsy test. We had, uh, I'm just going by memory here, 240 and 120, I think. I've been scrolling back and forth enough. I don't want to do it again. So 7.906. Yeah, it's close enough to what we got. Because remember, the, um, the calculator uses the pooled variation. Or at least this calculator does. I can't remember <coughs> if, you, if the other version of it allows you to pick and choose which one. Oh, um, actually, time out. 210. Let me do that again. So memory did not serve. Yeah, okay. That, that's a little bit more reasonable. All right, 0.24. Yeah, okay. So now I just need my p-value, which again, it should be in the neighborhood of this, but it's not going to be exactly the same because of the method that we chose. So, because there was no assumed p that we could make, or, or at least I didn't think there was. If you disagree uh, and you have a good reason for it, send me a message and articulate your case and uh, there'll be some bonus in it for you if you can, if you can prove your case to me. All right. So I'm going to drop little Easter eggs like that in my videos and, uh, and, you know, really just more or less to to see if anybody's actually watching. But, um, but yeah, we'll see uh, see what we can get out of those. All right, so I'm going to do inverse norm. If I get my pen to work. All 
All right. Inverse norm on that 6.167 business. So let me put out of here. I'm just gonna go with the estimate. So second vars. Uh, it's on the high side, 6.167. some large value I'm gonna put in like a I was gonna say a thousand but I'll just do a hundred argument error oh inverse norm jeez Louise normal CDF crikey This is what happens when I'm left to my own devices, when I don't have a class to correct me as I go. All right, so we're looking at roughly, and again, because I'm working with rounded values here, I didn't feel like going back and grabbing the, um, the more accurate uh, test statistic, but we're looking at about 3.48. Times 10 to the negative eighth power. All right, so that's definitely a reject the null hypothesis situation. All right, so there's sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the population proportion of men who prefer red wine is the same as women who prefer red wine at the 0.05 significance level. I'm gonna trim that down a little bit just because that's a mouthful. So let's see what we can do. Sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the population proportions of men and women who prefer red wine are equal at the 0 0.05 significance level. All right, so now the issue here is we never really answered their question. So we got to get around to that at some point, but we might as well finish our conclusion here by stating, therefore, the claim that the population proportion of men who prefer wine is greater than women is going to be true. But let's, let's again, pare that down a little bit. Uh, the claim that more men Prefer, uh, you know what, that, that might be paring it down too much. A higher percentage or proportion, either way, prefer red wine. That addresses the alternative hypothesis that's going to be true. All right, but we need a little bit of side work here to get after whether or not it's it's by 25%. All right, so what we're going to do is create a corresponding confidence interval. All right, so good news is if we go into one, uh, I'm sorry, two sample Z interval, I hit the wrong thing, two prob Z interval, Where is it? I just grabbed the first thing I saw that said two on it, like an animal. Uh, in your calculators, it'll hold on to the values. Mine, it, it just it just doesn't. You know, it's, it, this is an emulator. It's not quite the same. All right, so I have to retype the values in, but yours should still be there. All right, so 210, 500. Not that it's too crazy to type these values in, you know. 
then I'm just going to calculate. All right, so somewhere off on the side, I'm just going to note that the 95% confidence interval is going from about 0.123 to about 0.237. All right, so 0 0.123 to 0 0.237. All right, now this indicates that the difference in population proportion. is between, oh man, that's a poor quality between, but we'll live with it. Approximately 12.3% and 23.7%. All right, I didn't, I didn't use the conclusion template for the confidence interval because, you know, a very simple reason. They didn't ask me to create a confidence interval. And right, I'm just doing this as side work. So, you know, I, I'm going to follow my own rules here, you know, and you can do the same thing. All right. So we have an indication that at the 95% level, that we're only going to have a difference in population proportions between 12.3 and 23.7%. All right. So we can now conclude that even though men will have a higher percentage, percentage will not differ by 25%. because it's not included in the confidence interval. I'm gonna abbreviate it as not in the CI, but you know, like if you're writing a thoughtful reply or response, you'd write the, you know, the full verbiage here, all right? So to answer their question, proportion of men preferring red wine is 25% higher than for women. So I'd want to include a little statement there saying the, I'll, I'll just steal their words. The proportion of men preferring red wine is not 25% higher than for women. All right, and that answers the question, or at least it, it seems to. Now, just kind of going back to the beginning, perform a hypothesis test to determine, all right? Because if I were you, I might be questioning why we did the hypothesis test to begin with. We did the hypothesis test because we were told to do the hypothesis test. This is actually a nice opportunity for you to kind of pick and choose your battles and say, wait a minute, I think I might want to use a confidence interval to answer this question. All right? The benefit of doing the hypothesis test is if we fail to get a rejection, then that, that would have answered our question. 
Right? It would have showed no, no significant difference between men and women in terms of their preference, in which case we would have said, okay, well, that, well, how could men be 25% higher than women if they're about the same? All right? So there, there would have been some benefit to doing the hypothesis test, but only really if we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Once we rejected the null, we had to do a confidence interval anyway. So if you're left to your own devices to choose your, you know, your approach, uh, that, that should kind of factor into your thinking. And there it is.